Anigashimas. Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to go over the second subori, um, over the first, and uh, in there specifically how the motion of the foot stopped here in that turn. Okay. So number one basically starts to introduce you to form, proper form, proper angles. You know how to sit with it, your posture, your your basic movement, your connections. Okay. Number two, as with number one, when you got here, it stopped, okay? So if you're fully engaging your hip and your shoulders and your whole body, what's going to happen is that foot's going to turn. It's going to have to turn, okay? It can't stay locked here. It has to turn, okay? So if you look at it from the back, when this comes here, with one, it stops. With two... The back heel rotates, which allows us to come through and reset that foot. Okay. So the footwork here is very, very important in these supports. Okay. So everything. If you don't have a good foundation, you don't have a good hami, who cares what you do up top? You're going to fall. Okay. So turn. Comes here. That opens. That passes through. Okay. This resets. Then you're just basically going to come through again. Okay? Now your hips and your shoulders, as you'll see, do turn. Okay? So notice how they stay in parallel. Here, opens all the way through. See that alignment? Goes from there to when you come back, cross over the line, vector, one, two. See the blades are aligned, they're staying parallel. See? They never do this. You do this, very bad posture. Okay? Not good. So, with number two, slight variation on you know how you move. So, but basically the mechanics are the same. This here is still operating that way, okay? This is pushing forward, okay? Shoulders are down. About 10, good, on, good position, soften the knees. This comes up, and as this comes up, it's gonna to go to here, okay? As opposed to number one, where it went to here, okay? So we're not doing that. Number two, Rides up, one, two, like that. Okay. When you turn, then it drops like one. You're going to step through and cut again. Okay. So if you look at it from this perspective, number two, turn, sink. The hip sinks. You're going to be sinking further. You're not just stopping here, just to bring this up. Okay. Like one, two. This is going here. This is traveling all the way back here. So you have to move and get out of the way. Keeping shoulders and hips all moving together. One, two, okay? Now look, this is not out here. This is not all the way up here or all the way back here like this, okay? It's here, okay, right about there, okay? This is up here and the elbows are down, okay? If not, elbows are targets. We're dueling. I'm going to hit wrists, targets, under here. Okay. So I'm going to keep you as close as possible, coming up like that. And I'm going to go off to the side like this. See how that doesn't really change until again linkage. See that linkage? Step through, cut. All right. So here's the sequence. See how I'm working both sides of the line? I start on this side, I go to this side of the line. I go to cut again, I come back on this side of the line. And watch the foot. So as soon as I'm here, I don't just step through. I want to vector in to where I'm going to shoot. See that? Your toe, your foot is your compass to your 
opponent center. Here, going to here. See that? The placement of the foot is very, very important. And so sit, relax. Okay, shoulders are down. Square legs under here. Good space here. Not too tight on the sword, not too soft either. And just do that basic hip motion. See, if you do that right, look how much power that is shooting you back. So when you do the thousand cuts, you'll do it easily. If you try to, uh, you'll never make it. Okay? So, one, two, turn everything, three, four, eight. Set. Open. That foot opens because of the hip. Three, four. Okay. So when this lands, the back foot always nails it. Okay. From this perspective. Also notice how my height doesn't really change. I don't bob up and down when you're doing all these moves. Not doing this. That's a signal. Okay? Your eyes notice movement. Everything else in the background is still, no problem. You do a movement, something here, doesn't matter what's happening here, okay? that catches your mind, captures your mind. So you want to be able to uh, <clears throat> show as less movement as possible. It's like, say, a car driving down the street. You don't see uh, brake lights, but the car is moving at one certain level. Okay, so if you don't see the brake lights, you're going to go right into it because it's hard to discern that distance narrowing on you. Uh, but if the car starts doing this as it's slowing down and has brake lights, you'll say, "Hey, what's going on? I see movement." Okay, It'll capture your attention. Um, it's one of the first things that I learned. Uh, when I studied Kempo, you know, when you're doing movements, you know, strikes coming in like this, once you're down, you stay down. You stay on that line. And you do all your motion from here. That's why it's critical for you to tuck this, okay? Keep your hip under so you have more flexibility here that allows you to make the moves without going up and down. It's like being all the way down in a hami. If you get up, you're going to change your height. You know, just like if you go to throw a punch, you know a punch is coming that way, as opposed to that way. A little less, it's harder to discern that way. Same thing with the sword. Okay, your height on the sword. So sink. One, two, offline. Turn. This is going up. And just falls. Your hands are guides. They're not throwing the sword, they're guiding the sword. It's your whole body being pulled back, being pulled forward, being pulled back. All this motion comes from the hips, okay? It's your whole body. Seconds of booty. I'm gonna get smashed. 